Hey everybody, it's Allie and welcome to our YNR chat for Sunday, June 26th, 2016. I have fallen <laughs> for Travis's charm. I cannot help myself. This week I've been totally pulled into his eyes. <laughs> I think maybe it's because he, he gives me this sort of Matt Damon goodwill hunting vibe and I love me some Matt Damon. <laughs> and there's just something with his, is it like a Boston sort of accent? He's got some sort of little accent going on there and I find it very charming seeing him run his bar now. I've flipped over to the other side. I just, I don't know, the flip, the switch flip this week and I'm team Travis all the way and I do of course love me some Travis and Victoria I think they're a really cute couple I just hope I'm not being naive about liking Travis I don't want to be like summer getting pulled into a sexy guy because I I, I want to trust Travis I feel this twinge of suspicion still in the back of my mind that I just can't shake and it's probably mostly because I'm always looking for that YNR twist but for the most part I want to believe him we had this week a new like oil spill disaster thing and it's been revealed that most certainly it wasn't an accident it was some sort of sabotage uh, and Victoria was unreachable to deal with the problem and you gotta think a little bit like is that a coincidence is it a coincidence that Travis shows up and the oil th spills and things start happening and Victoria's all of a sudden spending so much more time away from work and not really able to deal with it or is it the product of uh, Travis being set up? So I think that's a really good place to start us off with a poll question for this week. Very simply, is Travis a good guy or is he a secret bad guy? I would love to get your official stands on this. YRChat.com is where you can cast your vote and leave comments on that topic because I think it's pretty obvious that YNR could twist it and make him either or at their, at their whim. Whatever they decide to make Travis now or three, six months from now, they can certainly do it. Right now, I, I want to believe that he's a good guy, but we also have that factor of Victoria's computer being unprotected. And whoever did this oil spill thing has some kind of computer knowledge uh, that would be required to pull something like this off. So uh, unfortunately the suspicion does kind of cast itself over Victoria and Nick and Summer and mostly Luca. Luca is the one who is most certainly pushing this Travis did it agenda forward. It's, it's pretty obvious that Luca is at the very least benefiting from casting suspicion onto Travis. He's the one who benefits every step along the way as all of this goes on. He also manages to elect himself as the president of the United States of Victoria's life and he walks on down to Travis's bar, gets up in his face, accuses him of being behind this oil thing and tells him to stay away from Victoria. Victoria doesn't want to have anything to do with you. She knows all about you and sees right through you. And furthermore, Luca starts going on and going off about how he didn't really mean anything to Victoria. He was just a warm body. And, and he uh, 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 is saying so many disparaging things about about Victoria presumably that Travis just punches him right in his face which I wish that we could have saw in real time because uh, of course all of that ended up happening off screen I loved by the way I, I like I I don't remember if it was in the flashback or if it was in the original, but Travis said to Luca something about, is your tie cutting off oxygen to your brain? I loved 
that insult because Luca's always walking around in all those tight clothes. I wish you would have said, are your tight pants cutting off the circulation to your brain? <laughs> that was really good. But I thought it was fake when Luca came back to the office with his bruised face because we just saw them having kind of a verbal argument and then next thing we know Luca's walking into Victoria's office with a bloody face and I thought what well, Luca completely did this to himself I I can imagine him standing out in the office like the halls of Newman Enterprises or maybe in a bathroom or something punching himself in the face <laughs> just to make it look like he was the victim because that's the effect of it after all um, but he manages once again to kind of cast the suspicion onto Travis and to make himself look really good like he has saved the day he tells Victoria and Nick and Summer that he solved the case and Travis has confessed to the entire thing and he and he and furthermore he hit me <laughs> how could he hit me in my pretty pretty face <laughs> but I tell you the story that Luca told was obviously not what we saw happen because Travis never confessed he and and Luca goes back to Victoria says that Travis confessed and also says to, or also tells Travis that Victoria doesn't want to be with him or see him anymore when we know that's not true. So it's pretty obvious that Luca is twisting the story and manipulating the story. Absolutely. But then again, I can't help it. I can't help it. We didn't see what happened in real time. Is it a coincidence that we saw before the punch and then we saw uh, Travis's version of what happened as a flashback from Travis's perspective. Why did they do it like that? Why did Ryanair present it like that? Are they trying to make it ambiguous at all? Or am I just reading way too much into it? Because the latter is certainly possible. I was very glad. I'm rooting for Travis to be a good guy. Um, and I was very glad that he had a chance to defend himself because after the confrontation between Luca and Travis at the man's bar, I assumed that Travis was going to believe everything that Luca said and that he was going to stay away and, and say, whatever, this is too much trouble, more trouble than it's worth. But he didn't. He immediately went to Victoria to talk to her and to present his side and to say, you know me, look at all of the time we've spent together. Do you really think that I was faking all of that? And of course he made a very compelling and emotional argument which convinced Victoria. I have a feeling that it really convinced Nick too. I mean, at this point, it's, it's definitely Luca's word against Travis, but we know that Luca was embellishing, embellishing and changing the story. So I'm inclined to want, just me personally, I'm, I'm sort of inclined to want to believe that Travis was being really genuine and that what he shares with Victoria is real and of course he made he made you know probably the best point of all look you walked into my bar I didn't come seeking you out there's nothing suspicious about the way that we met I didn't just put out a, a mental a mind wave to try to mind control you into my bar I mean certainly if Travis is manipulating wouldn't it it would have to be something that he just came up with and saw as an opportunity um, but I mean ultimately I, I think Luca's got to be behind it all right it's is it a hundred percent Luca um, I, I, I have to reserve at least some mental space for YNR putting a twist in there. Um, certainly, it, it's the, the, if you're going to decide who you trust more, Luca is a snake. He's always been a snake. He's never pretended to be anything but. And it just almost keeps getting worse. Every time I see him with Summer, smooching up on her, just having them make love and be fun around each other. It's so tainted knowing that he is pulling strings behind the scenes. I can't be too mad at him because, I, I mean, on the, I, I'm, I'm oh, 
always, every week, lauding Hillary for being a, a, an amazing villain. <laughs> and then I've got Luca over here on the other side doing a lot of the same stuff or being similarly manipulative. And I, and I can't be too much harder on him than on Hillary, but it's hard to watch him seemingly duping Summer, who is very innocent. I mean, it's it's one thing like Devon or Jack or whoever's getting played. Like, I feel like they're more adult and they should probably know better, but there's something about Summer that is just so naive and Nick tries to warn her that maybe all is not what it seems. We have to look at everybody and he gives her a heads up that maybe he should, that she should keep an eye on Luca and just see if there's anything suspicious about him. And she's at least sort of thinking in the Austin direction, remembering the fact that her husband was lying and manipulating her. I mean, she married a man who was who was making a documentary about her family, a negative like expose about her family behind her back. So Summer has been used before. She cannot have her eyes completely closed to the fact that it might be happening again. So maybe, maybe she will actually hear Nick and heed his warning or maybe Luca will continue to blind her with sex and french fries. I don't know. <laughs> Can you imagine if Luca and Hillary hooked up? What kind of craziness would be unleashed upon this town if those two actually teamed up? It would be havoc. It would be kind of awesome. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, this Nick and Victoria are deciding to launch a full investigation on who could have been behind the sabotaging the oil rig and Victoria hires Kevin to follow the trail. And that trail at the very end of Friday's show seemed to lead right back to Natalie. Meredith is not testifying against Adam, then she is, and now she's not again. What do you want, woman? She's giving me whiplash. I don't know what to think about who she is, where she is, where she stands. I, I mean, I suppose it's simply she decided to retract her, uh, her offer to testify against Adam because Victor told her not to do it, and he is most certainly the final word in anything and everything that happens in her life. So upon Victor's request, she decides I'm not going to testify at Adam's trial, but surprise twist, guess who is going to be testifying at Adam's trial besides Ian Ward? Victor. So Victor has decided that he's going to get up on the stand and tell the true story as if Victor really knows anything about the truth. I don't even know that Victor could identify the truth if it smacked him in the face at this point. I'm kind of guessing that we're going to see the trial next week. It seems like it's all culminating and it's coming to a quick, quick uh, uh, peak here. And the warden has been sort of... Uh, um, just sort of sneaking around, or I don't know, sneaking around, but he's been having more of a presence in the prison, and he's been warning Meredith and uh, to keep away from Victor. He's been keeping an eye on Victor, and there was this little scene toward the end of the week where the warden takes Victor into a room and says, look, I know you're going to be testifying at this trial now. I don't want any funny stuff. You should know that I have given orders for my men to shoot, to kill, should you lose your mind and try to do any kind of prison break thing. So all of that suspicion is being cast on Victor as far as a prison break when it's probably Ian Ward who's going to try to escape. So I, I can only imagine that that is a little bit of foreshadowing and that that maybe next week we're gonna get the trial or at least maybe the transport, transporting Victor and Ian Ward to to the, the courthouse or wherever they need to give their testimony and maybe there will be a prison break, may, break maybe there will be some gunfire. I don't, I'm just guessing on that, but that could be a little bit dramatic and fun. We shall see. 
Um, Adam is just feeling like his his head is slowly more and more becoming underwater and he goes to Victor to visit him and just try to get him to confess, try to talk to him, try to see, you know, try to try to understand where Victor's coming from because Adam knows in his heart in his mind that Victor is the one who is setting him up and he is. So Adam is trying to talk to Victor about it and Victor is going on and on about his clean conscience saying this is all you I don't have anything to do with it and then we see him go back to Meredith's office he's using the phone I mean he's got free access to her phone uh, and to call uh, this mystery woman who he, he calls my dear uh, and I mean I, I, I guess we should have seen that the that Meredith was being used right from the very beginning because he is benefiting from all of the freedom that his relationship with her has given him. So he is, of course, absolutely able to orchestrate things from the inside. He all, and, and, and then to sit there and say that he has nothing to do with any of it with a straight face really puts Victor in kind of a just an extra disgusting light. Nikki goes to visit him this week and he says the thing about I have a clean conscience to her too. I don't know how he could say that when we know he's manipulating. Um, I mean, Nikki was trying to at least ask him to, like, if you're behind the oil spill, Victor, and all of this that's going on with your children, can you stop? Can you just try to stop making them hurt? And she pleads with him, you know, just be a good father. And it was it was such a nice follow-up to the conversation uh, from Adam being there, where Adam is showing Victor these a picture or a video of Connor and saying, this is what... A happy child looks like who has a happy home and you're about to steal that from him of course that doesn't phase Victor whatsoever and then following it up Nikki says we have children together and you need to be the bigger man and be a good father to them even if our divorce is gonna be finalized in two weeks Oh, Victor and Nikki, the divorce is coming up. I uh, Two weeks, I guess the clock is ticking on that. I'm sure she'll be at the trial, too. Um, most certainly she'll be uh, in the stands, if, especially if Victor's going to be uh, testifying. I mean, the, the scene between Nikki and Victor was kind of great. I mean, it was like another one of the classic Nikki-Victor arguments. I mean, he, you could just, I could tell that, that, that Eric Braden was ad-libbing, I mean, because he he called her like, oh yeah, you're pure as the driven snow. I mean, you could tell when they start talking over each other that it's just something that the two actors came up with. And I came to that conclusion completely independently. And then Gary had called into my voicemail and said he read an article in Soap Opera Digest where Melody Thomas Scott, or I can't remember if it was one or the other or both, Eric Braden talking about specifically that scene and how much they do end up ad-libbing those lines. And it just become it makes it more real it's like a real argument between a husband and a wife who are going through a bitter divorce and uh, and I just thought that was great and I just knew it <laughs> I mean we got it we got to appreciate those classic argument scenes between Nikki and Victor while we have them because they're always good <laughs> um, the autopsy results came back I thought for sure that they would redo the autopsy and find out that Constance was not being poisoned, but no! Surprisingly, the, the, the official results, as, as Dylan told us, were that she was riddled with poison. I, I, I don't know how you become riddled with poison, but I mean, she must have been being poisoned over a lo very long period of time, so no question about it. I, I don't know. I. I keep I do keep going back to the thought that maybe she was just poisoning herself and this is all just a big coincidence because we know Victor's the one who forged the diary. We know Victor's the one who's pulling all these strings to make it look like Adam did it. So the, unless there's some other killer who just had a motive for killing this old woman, I don't I had theorized of course that it was Sage, but I don't know if Wyner is going to end up heading in that direction. It just makes me think, well, maybe it's just some sort of coincidence she just happened to be poisoning her poisoning herself um, that's sort of where I'm resting on on that 
that point. But still, the fact that she was poisoned does not mean that Adam did it. I don't see how we can necessarily connect the dots to Adam other than Sage's diary, which is sort of just hearsay from a dead woman. You can't really, is that even admissible? I, I, there's no other evidence at this point, and yet there's still a full ongoing uh, investigation. I guess it's reasonable doubt because Dylan shows up and next thing you know, at Adam's condo with a search warrant, and it did not, it was not pretty. Oh man, Adam was not happy about it. He flipped out. He like goes into the bureau and he says, Oh, you want to search things? Here, why don't we search in here? And he like, he destroyed, he pulls out, starts pulling stuff out of the bureau and says, Here, you know, uh, like, did, what do you think about this? Do you think it's in here? Do you think it's in here? I mean, he destroyed those greeting cards that Chelsea spent all those hours making. He like, decapitated Connor's teddy bear, pulled the stuffing out of them and everything. Oh, you think maybe the evidence is in here? And he threw a glass at the fireplace earlier in the week. So uh, it's a little, it's not helping Adam look like a non-violent victim here when he's lashing out big time, but it certainly was a really good scene. I, I love just watching that stuffing from the teddy bear flying in the room and poor Chelsea's face. She doesn't quite know what to do. Um, and I mean, it's just all everything is pointing to Adam and there's nothing that he can seem to do to to, to prove his own innocence. Of course, next thing you know, uh, they show up with a, a, also a warrant for searching a storage unit that is in Adam slash Gabriel Bingham's name. Uh, it was apparently something that Sage had opened up and unfortunately it was it was like Adam's name was on it or he confessed to the fact that he uh, did help Sage open it to store some of Constance's things but claims that he's never been to the storage unit when next thing you know they find a key to the storage unit at the condo. I, I keep I keep thinking well I, I guess say, I, I just, I don't know. I just don't know. I feel bad for Adam, but of course, then again, as all of this is going on, we've got Victor um, having another meeting with the mystery woman, and we see her opening up this storage container, which I don't know why Adam confessed to even having any knowledge of whatsoever. So the question is, how did the key get in the condo? And then we see the mystery woman walking into the storage unit and she's putting this glass vial of poison inside of a glass vase, inside of a box, which the police find three minutes later and bring back and, and it just seems like it's it's toast, like Adam is toast. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. Who's the mystery woman? Uh, that's also another really good question for you guys uh, to feed back to me on this week. I feel so confused and so lost because I, 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 I never wanted to believe that Victor was behind this whole thing. And even last week, I still had a little bit of doubt. Like, well, maybe, maybe he wasn't. But, I, but no, now it's completely obvious that he is orchestrating all of this, that he's got somebody working with him. But who is it? Is it Natalie? Is I mean, it seems like all signs are pointing to Natalie. But then I've still got that uh, that bug go, you know, in the back of my head thinking that maybe it's Chloe or maybe it's both. I mean, since the oil spill had a technical computery aspect to it, maybe that was Victor working with Natalie, and maybe the framing of Adam is being left to somebody who had a better motive against Adam, like Chloe. I'm not very good at figuring out mysteries. <laughs> I think maybe that's part of the reason why I'm not as into crime dramas because I'm all, always confused. I always get thrown off by the red herring. I'm so easily misled. <laughs> uh, maybe these are not my favorite types of storylines. Maybe I like them to be a little bit more obvious. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, it was obvious this week when Ashley told Jack that Hillary was the real briber and the real blackmailer.
Miller and Jack has been he's been supporting Hillary for weeks now he's been the only one in town who's had her back and now he realizes that at least some of the things that people have been saying about her are actually true so he confronts her and he's absolutely furious with her and she's able to turn it on a dime just to save herself she goes into victim mode and tells Jack that Neil was the kidnapper which is something that was not common knowledge uh, until this week because uh, he I mean Jack never would have guessed that Neil was actually the one behind this but still the way uh, Hillary twisted it and, and turned it was really shocking to me because it doesn't really matter if Neil was the one who kidnapped you. That doesn't have anything to do with the fact that you were blackmailing Ashley and that you were the real one behind the bribery scandal. And Jack just, it's he, I guess much like me in a mystery, Jack just followed the shock of hearing that Neil did it and completely forgot about everything Thing that Ashley had just told him to be true about Hillary and Jack shifts focus completely onto Neil confronts Neil he ends up just blowing up at him tell ends up t telling Ashley too so pretty much everybody in town <laughs> it just seems like everybody in town except the police knows what Neil really did um, Jack wants to go to the police of course but Ashley manages to convince him not to I think mostly so that Neville doesn't get dragged into this whole mess but also let's not send Lily and Kane and Devon and like the entire Winters family to jail just to avenge Hillary just to help make Hillary you know, help make Hillary not the victim. It's just so crazy to me how willing Jack is to save the damsel in distress and to throw all of the other evidence and other accusations and truths about her completely out the window. I mean, Jack is right now where Devon has been a, a, a month ago and over the past couple of months. And finally, Devon hit his wall with that, which I thought was fantastic. I loved, loved that Devon finally confronted Hillary this week and said, you know, I'm starting to think that maybe you might not be a good person. I've tried to make excuses for you. I've tried to help you. And at this point, I'm thinking maybe you're just not good. <laughs> and I thought, well, bravo, finally, Devon. It was actually a really good scene. I thought that Devon was pretty convincing and pretty good in that scene because a lot of times Devon, and especially lately, he's just seemed kind of like a bland fool. I mean, he hasn't really given us much by way of fire, and I thought he was really pretty good in that scene. But Hillary's already got another mark. I mean, she, she you know, Jack finds out, Devon goes downstairs and tells everybody, well, I guess me and Hillary are over. And Jack is immediately on Hillary's side. He doesn't listen to anybody else. He says, how, you know, how could you not fight for your marriage? And, and he's getting all kind of, he's judgmental with Neil. He's judgmental with Devon. He's judgmental with everybody except Hillary. He goes back up to her room to try to comfort her and she viciously flips out on him. I mean, she is like, she literally practically threw him out of her hotel room. She was getting physical and vicious with him. She shoves him out the door and slams the door behind him. And then Jack is standing on the outside going, Hillary, why'd you break, why'd you, come on, let me help you. And we just see the shot of her face on the other side of the door. And she's giving this evil smile. I couldn't believe it. I really thought it was, I thought she was just being genuine in that moment, that she was really upset about her world falling apart. And then to see that, that Joker smile spread across her face, they might as well have popped a speech bubble up above her head and put inside of it, I've got him right where I want him. Because that's exactly what she was thinking. Push him away, see if they come back. And just, and all that was, was a test 
of the groundwork she's been lying with Jack and she pushed him away and he still stood there begging for more. She's got him right where she wants him. Ooh. So poll results from last week are Hillary and Jack on the verge of a romance. 56% say yes. I think maybe we are going to see a romance between Hillary and Jack. 44% say no, that is definitely not going to happen. I wonder, I wonder, I kind of feel more in the camp of, I don't think that's, this. I don't know, I can't see that happening. I, I, I see Jack in this scenario as more of a mark than a romantic connection forming. I mean, how could a real romantic connection form when we know that she's manipulating on uh, on this end? So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe some of those votes were cast before the evil smile, or maybe you guys just think ultimately that it will lead that way. It's certainly possible. I mean, I guess out of all of this, maybe Jack and Hillary could actually find love. I'm not going to completely rule it out, but I just... I feel like all she's doing is like a hundred percent manipulating him at this point and I'm not sure how that would parlay itself into an actual relationship even if Jack even when Jack finds out about Phyllis's affair um, but Hillary is soon to be single she or single now she pretty much breaks up with Devon there was this scene in the hotel room where she's packing and telling him it's over we're never gonna last let's just face it we you know this relationship started off in a bad place how could we ever ever have made it work and poor Devon I think she just broke his little heart tells him she's leaving town which of course J Devon again goes back spreads the word to uh to Jack I mean it's clear that she's she's using Devon as that conduit too I mean she's playing masterfully both guys Jack runs up to rescue her in her hotel room and convinces her to, to stay I mean you know she wasn't gonna leave at all she just wanted Jack to convince her to stay stay. So what what is it exactly that Hillary wants? I find that to be a really compelling question of the week. What is Hillary's goal right now? I mean, why Jack over Devon? It, I mean, she could have stayed with Devon and had all the same things. Why is Jack the new conquest? I mean, does Hillary want I mean, you you answer me that. What is it that Hillary wants? Is it money? Is it power? And, and why one or the other guy? I mean, who has more money and power, Devon or Jack? That's another good question. Who has more money and power, Devon or Jack? Because I would think maybe Devon had more money, which equals power, but I don't know, the Abbott name. Maybe that's what Hillary wants. I'm just not sure. May, I don't know. Maybe all Hillary really wants is an easier mark. Devon and his meddling sister Lily have started to ask questions. Jack is just a, a willing fool. It kind of surprised me that Billy and Phyllis's naughty weekend sex picnic affair <laughs> had sort of a wackety smackety do sort of vibe to it toward the beginning of the week. I was surprised that it was kind of a little funny or a little like hey they're in a weird situation and like throwing in the kind of like Peter Pan sort of jokes and like it was just more jokey I guess than I thought it was going to be. I mean they almost seem to enjoy the fact that Ashley showed up and that she started asking questions about Phyllis and Phyllis was in the other room and Billy didn't kick Ashley out. He just was sort of snarkily uh, just sort of implying things knowing that Phyllis could hear and it was really weird. I mean, I, I think they kind of liked it. I mean, like Phyllis is sort of off in the other room kind of biting her nails listening to this conversation between brother and sister going on at one point Billy actually leaves the room with Ashley I think to go get her a glass of wine oh I mean and Ashley's like practically begging for a glass of wine it was just it had this weird funny vibe to it and Billy like crawl he, he crosses back through the room and like kisses Phyllis on the way back to Ashley and I just thought well that says so much right there I think 
the risk factor is really such a big part of what these two people are attracted to. I don't, I just don't think there's any denying that the fact that it's naughty is at least part of the reason why both of them find it appealing. And I, I was just surprised that it had that tone about it. And then it took, I mean, cause like it was on Friday, so much guilt. I mean, that's all I felt was guilt. And then on the, you know, coming from Phyllis at least, and then at, on you know, like Monday and Tuesday's show, he's taking her phone and wrapping it up with duct tape and putting it way high up in the bookcase. And you know, it's just sort of like this funny vibe. And then it switched toward the end of their time together to Billy looking at Phyllis and saying, uh, I love you. Of course, she didn't say it back, but he, he means it with all his heart. He loves her. He is just, he, she is his dream woman at this point. And rather than saying, I love you back to Billy, she turns around, calls Jack the next morning and is on the phone saying, I love you to him and is saying that she's going to come back, that she's going to come back from Montreal early. She cuts her weekend with, with Billy short and to go back to Jack and I just thought oh, I'm I'm confused <laughs> about where Phyllis stands. I mean, at this point, I know where Billy stands. In fact, I I honestly almost wouldn't be surprised to see Billy blow up the secret just so he could have her. I mean, he has got to be resentful of the fact that he's with her and she's thinking of Jack and that she cut his weekend short to go back and be with Jack. And I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around where exactly she's at in the process. How can she just go back to Jack and like, like it's every day, get back into her everyday routine with him. And she has this awkward meeting with him, acting like she just got back from the airport and is at the athletic club with him. And, and it's very casual. And she's sort of playing this role of, you know, like she's the doting, supportive wife. Like, oh, I came back early from my business trip because I was worried about you. She's putting on this whole air like it's nothing. I mean, really, truly, she played it very well. The way she was looking at Jack, I mean, I think it just would have been written all over my face. She just, she wasn't at a business meeting, Jack. She was having naughty, dirty sex picnic with your brother all weekend while you thought she was working. And she, and she could just sit there and play it off. I mean, I, I <laughs> you gotta hand it to the woman. She is a, a very skilled liar and manipulator there because I don't think I could do it. I mean, it was, it was awkward between them a little only because I think we knew uh, what she'd just been doing. But for the most part, I, she pulled it off quite beautifully. I mean, it's weird. It's, and I don't, I, I don't know. Like, is it over? I guess I thought that when she had the the weekend with Billy, like after it was all done, I thought it was sort of going to be an ongoing thing. Just like, a, okay, it's understood. I'm going to have my marriage with Jack and then I'm going to come here sometimes and have an affair with you. And then I, th and then later on in the week, I thought, well, is she saying goodbye to Billy? Was, you know, she, is she, is she, is it, you know, is in her, in her mind, did she leave thinking, well, this is it? Because she left him like that bouquet of flowers and saying, I just wanted to leave something here to, for my present. So it seems like she's, I can't tell. Is she trying to end things with Billy and go back to Jack? Or is she just full on having her cake and eating it too? I mean, I almost kind of from a storyline perspective like the idea of it being both. I mean, I could probably stand another week or two of there being a blatant affair <laughs> before somebody blows it all to smithereens. I mean, it really kind of does remind me of the affair she had I think on Jack with Nick I think Phyllis was with, was with Jack and uh, Nick was with Sharon and Phyllis and Nick found themselves drawn into this affair and they were kind of meeting off in secret and doing their sexy and fun thing. All the while, the other spouses had no idea. But do you remember how Phyllis and Nick had that little um, sort of mantra between them? It was see no evil, hear no evil, 
speak no evil. And for years, Phyllis had those monkeys in her apartment that was covering eyes and ears and mouth. And it's kind of like the exact same vibe. I think Phyllis is just able maybe to put herself in this headspace where she's thinking, if I don't acknowledge it, it's not really happening. I should probably see a shrink. <laughs> not me, not me. Uh, it, it was Travis, actually, who said he should probably see a shrink. That was last week's Who Said It quote, and I think I tricked quite a few people. As soon as Travis said that, I wrote it down because I thought it was kind of a cute little moment between he and Victoria. He was um, talking about, you know, they were kind of both talking about the their headspace when it comes to their career and you know not liking who they were and you know in Travis just sort of explaining himself and it was so sort of deep and psychological that he says that you know I should probably see a shrink or I oh, was that the exact line it, yeah I should probably see a shrink but then later in the week Sharon and Mariah were having a conversation where Mariah was trying to convince Sharon to see her doctor but uh, it just all worked out too perfectly Mariah never said that a lot of people thought it was Mariah or Sharon uh, it just it worked out way too well I think uh, Mariah was approaching it more from a serious like girl mom you need help <laughs> and Travis was kind of more of a joke so I think I fooled the majority of you and we did the who said it quote a little bit different this past week where I had all of the answers answers hidden so that you couldn't see what other people were guessing too. Uh, and so I, I had eight people who got it right. Hopefully I'll do a better job at reading names this week. I forgot Mary last week. It's just, I don't know why it's so hard. Just I can think reading a, a list that's like not numbered off of a computer screen is kind of hard uh, while I've got camera and microphone and computer and all this other stuff going on. But hopefully this will be a little bit easier because it's coming in a different format for me. So. The people who guessed Travis last week uh, got it right were Victoria and hold on a second here. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get everybody right this week. Victoria, Mary, <laughs> she got it right again this week and I didn't miss her. Austin and Naomi got it right. Troy, John Christopher, Jen, Tanya and Melissa. All eight of you guys got it right. I think we should do it in kind of um, the, a similar fashion this week and I'll see if uh, maybe keeping the answers hidden makes the quote uh, guessing a little bit more of a challenge. So who said this quote uh, during this past week's YNR? Free advice is worth every penny. <laughs> I love that line, don't you? I mean, it's so true. There's always somebody there waiting to give you some free advice, and it is indeed worth every penny. So who do you think said that quote? You can go to yrchat.com to leave your guess, and if you get the guess right on the website, then I will 100%, I promise, I'm going to get these right. If it's the last thing I do, I will give everybody their shout out during next week's uh, YNR chat. Free advice is worth every penny. My camera battery is starting to run out, so I am going to just read a few comments. We'll, we'll see, if, we'll go as far as I can go, and hopefully I will get a lot of comments in before I got cut off. I got a really nice comment at the beginning of the week from Marianne in Paris who says she loves YNR chat and listens to it uh, as part of her Monday morning routine. I love that. I mean, shoot, I have a full on YNR routine. It consumes hours and hours <laughs> of my week. So I always kind of like hearing what other people's routines are. And it's nice to know that people are watching uh, the show and listening and, or watching the chat. Uh, from all around the world. I think Marianne might have left that comment late last week because I usually check voicemails on Saturday morning and then I don't get them again uh, until uh, I do YNR chat. So if you're dying to get a comment in for the current week, uh, you can leave the message before like Saturday morning. But I listen to them all. Uh, I just might pick up pick them up after I've done the chat and I can always include them in the next weeks but um, that's part of my YNR routine <laughs> when I listen to my comments. Uh, Beatrice left me a voicemail saying Luca is behind all 
of this. And then he's gonna come in like a soldier and make it look like he's fixing everything. I thought for a moment that Summer was gonna wise up to it. And then Beatrice, she did not. I don't think she did. I think that she has her little antennae up about it, but I don't I don't know if she's really truly going to discover his snakery. It seems like he's always able to talk his way out of it. I would love to see Summer smarten up uh, to, to his manipulation, but I just don't know if it's going to happen. But I think you're right that Luca is probably just the, the primary person. He's got the he's got the means. He's got the motives. It's very classic uh, it's a it's a very classic move to go in and create the crisis and then come in and present yourself as the one who is going to save it all who's gonna be the hero and that's probably exactly what he's doing um, rocks 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 grace on YouTube says I still think that Travis might be a Victor plant Hey, if the man can have a love affair and frame his son from jail, why couldn't he hire someone to trip his daughter too? Yeah, see that's the thing is I still have that little bit of doubt in the back of my mind. I want to believe him, but it, 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 of course it's possible. Of course it's possible Travis could be working on his own or he could be working with Victor. Or even it was sort of interesting the way Summer implied to Luca that is there any chance that Travis might be working with a partner? I wonder if she suspects that, uh, that Luca might be working with Travis. I don't know. Uh, Sandra at YRChat.com. By the way, this is our, this is our, Sandra is our YNR Chat Poet Laureate. <laughs> um, I, I, if you want to hear this week's poem that she wrote, you can go to YRChat.com and leave it in the comment, or read it in the comments, but I couldn't pass up this comment that Sandra made. I had to pick this one and said because it's so darn good. Sandra says, I'm convinced that it's Chloe helping Victor sabotage the case against Adam. Chloe has been in Chelsea and Adam's condo so many times she would know how to sneak in and where to hide a key to the store uh, where to hide a key to the storage locker. Also, Chloe hates Adam and she's not beyond revenge. I bet next week they show her face. I didn't think of that, Sandra, about Chloe being completely someone who has would have access to Adam and Chelsea's condo. That's perfect. That really, really kind of feeds into what I was maybe thinking about uh, her being the one behind uh, at least the Adam part of it. Um, Sandra also says, uh, oh, by the way, where does Phyllis park? When she visits Billy, <laughs> no one seems to notice her car. Maybe she's an Uber girl. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, Phyllis is taxiing to Billy's house, but I had to mention that to Sandra because I was dying at the idea that Phyllis was strolling around the, can the Chancellor Mansion grounds, going to the gar Catherine's most beautiful garden and snipping off the flowers to create a bouquet for Billy. I'm thinking, why would you even go out I would not be seen outside of those four walls and she's just walking around on the mansion grounds. Anybody could show up there. I think they want to get caught because they're naughty. <laughs> uh, John Christopher at YRChat.com says, it seems Phyllis no longer feels guilty about her affair with Billy. It almost feels like she's not doing anything wrong anymore. Her attitude toward Jack has changed. She dismisses his affection. First, she does not want to go to Barbados with Jack, and when she calls him from Billy's house, her tone is very cold. She does not even want Jack to kiss her on the lips anymore. The last few times Jack leaned in to kiss her, she turned away and gave him her cheek instead as if to say, these are Billy's lips now. <laughs> I love that idea. These are Billy's lips now. That's why I almost kind of wonder if Billy is going to get jealous and end up blowing up the secret on his own because now Billy's all alone roaming around in that house and he has to think about the woman of his dreams sleeping with his brother. That's a hard pill to swallow. Oh my. Daisy on Facebook says, I wonder if Hillary will discover Billy and Phyllis are having the affair, then tell Jack. 
of course, she'll have to be there for him. Yeah, that's the other possibility I was thinking of too, Daisy. There's a reason that Jack and Hillary are hooking up, and I gotta know what it is. And that would make sense. Hillary is someone who is not above sneaking around and finding out a way to, br to break up Jack and Phyllis's marriage so that she can have him or complete her goal for whatever that is. So if Hillary was the one who got the information about Billy and Phyllis, she wouldn't hesitate a second to create the crisis and then be the one to come in and be the hero and offer to sweep Jack off his feet. That is brilliant and possibly right where they're going. Probably, probably even the most likely scenario, I'd say. Um, I'm gonna get your name wrong. Uh, <laughs> Zoe Per Xplex. <laughs> I know you've told me how to say it before and I forgot. So maybe I'll just call you Zoe. <laughs> That's something I can remember. Uh, at yrchat.com says, poor Jack, how humiliating. Now it appears as though his fate is to become a plaything for Hillary. John Abbott, your son needs another conjuring. Yes. Um, first of all, I, I f completely forgot about John Abbott being a, a ghost, a character that was brought back after he died onto the show. We talked about that a little bit last week uh, about the, in terms of the sage haunting, uh, which other characters had been brought back to the show after they died as a ghost. Aaron left uh, like a list of people on uh, the YRChat.com site if you want to go read that because there was a lot of them I hadn't even thought of either. But yeah, I, I would be... If, for John Abbott coming back and knocking a little sense into his son. Uh, Shakanda at YRChat.com says, Hillary's Jack's type. She plays hard and dirty just like Phyllis. And Hillary likes power, which Jack has. Let's be honest, Devon can't even handle a woman like Hillary anyway. She's too much of a challenge. Besides, I want to see some vanilla and chocolate action in YNR. I was hoping for it since the idea of Nikki and Neil. Um, yeah, I, you know, it's kind of funny thinking about N Nikki and Neil. I, uh, when you said that, Shikanda, I thought back to Victoria and Neil. Do you remember? Oh, oh, shoot. It's probably been a while. It's probably been since late 90s since the there was maybe even early 2000s where it seemed like Victoria and Neil were going to start up a relationship and it was it seemed like it was sort of screen tested and that never ended up happening. Maybe, uh, maybe who knows, maybe Jack and Hillary will have a, a, a romance. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, oh, Gary made a really good comment that I never would have made this connection, um, but regarding Jack being on his soapbox toward Neil not telling the truth about kidnapping Hillary. Gary says, how could, you know, Jack, or Jack is saying, how could Neil not come forward? Well, why didn't Jack come forward when he got home and prosecute Victor? Because he was worried about his own skin. He didn't want to be blamed for wringing Kelly's neck and all of those people who got blown up on the ship. It's pretty much the same thing. Put yourself in another person's place. I never would have made that connection, but it makes complete and perfect sense. I mean, the reasons why Neil didn't come forward about Hillary are the exact same for why uh, Jack didn't come forward about Victor. I love that correlation. Erin on YouTube says, it also is really annoying me that Sharon is keeping, that Sharon keeps arguing with Mariah at the house and every week Dylan walks in on them and Sharon has to come up with some lie to throw Dylan off. It's getting so annoying to watch. What's the point of having a husband if you're not going to confide in him? Either be honest with him or fight when he's not around. <laughs> I know, it is wearing on me too, Erin. I would like to see that little trope come Kind of put tucked under a rug or something because once again uh, I mean it's like everybody's always walking in on somebody when it comes to this little se baby secret Ma Sharon and Dylan this time walk in on Mariah and Kevin and Mariah was almost gonna tell Kevin and then she kind of chickens out and makes something else up uh, and it's 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 we know that's not how this, the truth is gonna re be revealed so I don't know why they keep going after it I am enjoying more of the sage nightmares though and at yrchat.com too there was a really good uh, theory and comment oh I, should, I forgot who left it uh, you know who you are but it was a really good theory about uh, sage and maybe possibly even a way that YNR could bring her back uh, and say that uh, she didn't 
die. I like that idea. I'd love to see Sage back for real. <laughs> um, Justin left me a voicemail with a really good uh, hypothetical question. I love Justin's hypothetical questions. He says, if YNR were to do a crossover with another TV show, past or present, what should it be? Ooh, Justin theorized that he'd like to see a crossover between YNR and the Jerry Springer show. Just imagine all that drama. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I gotta think about that one, but I'm putting that up as a community question at yrchat.com this week. So if you guys can think of a really fun crossover idea between Young and the Restless and another show, past or present, what would it be and why? Maybe Survivor or something. Can't you almost like see Summer getting dropped on a desert island and seeing if she could compete? <laughs> she probably could, who knows? Who would be the YNR sole survivor? Or, I mean, for the season, what about Big Brother? You know I'm watching that show, too. What about we throw all of the YNR house guests into the Big Brother house, or into the, into the YNR cast into the Big Brother house? That'd be some drama right there, too. <laughs> Oh boy, um, so many good comments this week. So lots of people got their soap, which makes me so happy. Tawny left me a, an email saying she got her soaps, and Anna said she got her soaps. Anna's having a sucky week this week, so mwah, I'm sending some extra love for Anna. Maybe lathering up with those Nick and Sharon soaps will help you feel a little better. Um, I think... The only person I didn't hear back from on the giveaway, though, was Char. Char, if you're out there, I emailed you. You won the giveaway, and you haven't emailed me back. If, you, if you're listening to this, contact me or check your email or whatever. I, I'm saving your bar of Nikki, and I want to get it to you. Um, and other than that, I, uh, I was kind of surprised. I was using my um, Dylan lotion last night, and I, it smells so good. I was like, I can't believe nobody picked this. I wish I would have had a chance to make the Dylan so Soap because it's such a good good summer scent and I'm mad at myself that I kind of ran out of time but if you um, are interested in seeing more photos and info on the soaps GenoaCitySoap.com and fall soaps are coming too I'm making some more fall soap this weekend I made some the last two weekends so all that's coming too and we'll do another giveaway thanks everybody who participated those are really fun for me and I'm definitely gonna come back and do some more um, that's like one of my favorite new things I only wish I had more time to do it more often but uh, we'll see okay I think before my camera battery dies I should probably call it quits I hope everybody has a really good week and continues to leave me some comments. YRChat.com is where the blog is, where you can read and leave your comments about the show. Also, you can find the Facebook and YouTube page from there and the voicemail number 309 588 four five six nine I think you get three minutes before the beep if you want to leave me a voice comment or however you want to leave your comment I always love hearing from you and if your comments good hopefully I will include it in next week's why in our chat um okay I guess that's it for me for now <laughs> I'll see you guys next week everybody take care bye